put up your sword. The enemy is still out there. The question now is where? Sabina from Geek Culture in Singapore. I hope you're doing well. I'm very um, well. Nice sofa. Oh, thank you. It's super bright. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings is coming out really soon. Can you talk about the immense pleasure and pressure of creating, you know, a new take on this iconic franchise? Yeah, there is a huge amount of pressure, um, and that's because it's so beloved. And so I keep having to remind myself that, like, that's lovely to be in something that people are so passionate about and have loved for so long. Um, yeah, it's a real gift. Um, but yeah, you get moments where you think, how is this happening? I can't do this. And then you just have to allow them because I think that's, that's sanity really. You can't think this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of something that's beloved, you are Galadriel, like the Galadriel. So what was it <laughs> like when you first found out that you won the role and how did you prepare for it? Um, yeah, when I first found out that I was going to be in this show, um, it was just before a screening of a film I was in, and I thought I was dealing with it quite well. And then during the Q&A, I just thought about the fact that I was going to New Zealand, just passed out. Um, and since then, I've been kind of slowly accepting that this is what it is, a lot of pinch me moments. Um, and to prepare for it, a huge part of it was um, the physical aspect of being an elf. So we had an amazing movement director who we kind of spoke about, like, how do elves hear? How do elves see? Um, how do they move through the world? Um, and then amazing stunt quarters and coordinators and a wonderful dialect coach. Because for me, a big part of Tolkien's world is language. And mm. I was really interested in the fact that Gladriel is bilingual as I am. Um, so exploring that was a big pathway to her. It seems like Galadriel will change the course of many people's lives moving forward, starting with Hellbrand. But in return, how do they shape her and in her journey trying to find Sauron? Um, so I think there is an element of arrogance to the elves. And I think she will learn humility um, mm -hmm. as she goes through. Um, and yeah, she's going to meet lots of people and she's going to get her ring, which will be really exciting. Now, there was one particular scene that I loved, and it was the one of her and the seas. She was swimming away from this. Uh -huh. mm. How is that like? How was filming that like? Because it was insane. I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, it was so much fun filming that because when we were on this huge water tank um, with this raft in the middle, and there was about 10 of us on the raft, um, and you can't get on and off in between takes. So we all just got to know each other really well. Um, right yeah, and then filming the that scene um, was quite funny because we had the director on the microphone um, basically trying to frighten us with where this monster was coming from and things. So it was really good fun. And no one fell in, which I was surprised. We all managed to stay on deck. That is impressive. That's great. <laughs> I'm really excited for fans to see that. <laughs> now, I just want to know, what is your best memory of filming throughout this entire series? Hmm. It's difficult to pick one, but um, I worked with a wonderful woman called Morgan, who was um, a driver on the show and also kind of was on set as uh, an AD. And we, she joined in in all of my training and just every morning driving into work with her, um, we had a little playlist, we'd sing along to songs together, and it was really kind of the friendships I made, of which she was a really important one. Those are my best memories. What song though? And I'm curious, what's on the playlist? I'll hear it. Oh, <laughs> very 80s. Very 80s. Very 80s. <laughs> you need some 80s like power ballads to get you through the day. <laughs>